the Bridge of Light approach in India will give us a lot of more insights because uh, when Jos was here last uh, August, he, he could connect really uh, to the holistic value system in, in India and the, 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 the people are doing it in a natural way, uh, taking care of client, the clients in, in Bürtsor. So uh, he thought, uh, could India become one of the lab laboratories for uh, the next 10, 20 years or 30 years of uh, experimentation uh, with the Bürtsor like uh, approach? He, he mentioned that he started as a movement uh, and that's uh, how it is going also internationally. Uh, so uh, for each uh, country, we are we are still trying to find out which is the best business model. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Which is the uh, best uh, financial model? Uh, we are trying to see uh, where uh, we could go with franchising, where we, we could go with the joint venture. So um, that that's actually the approach and the connectedness with uh, with uh, India. Um, I relate the three uh, principles already to uh, needing, rethinking, and common sensing to these three Indian concepts. Uh, as you have seen in the flyer, uh, we have added uh, some more uh, because we thought uh, those were not uh, my focus points at that time when I did the research. Shakti, potentialities, shubla, uh, welfare for all and Sukh continues our conscious Sukh. Uh, these are all uh, six uh, uh, concepts which we will use in the coming years uh, to, do, to build our research, to develop this integration simplification theory further. And uh, currently uh, we are working on uh, finalizing a book which we will call Integrate, uh, Integrative uh, uh, intelligence. Uh, we will present some of the thoughts at the end of the conference because in our process, because we follow the inductive approach, in our process we notice that it's not only the six S that we mentioned here, there are many more. And uh, we found that there is such a importance to look at who is observing and uh, it would be more helpful to, to build sustainable businesses if we give the observer uh, an important role, if we too much try to put theories in uh, universal kinds of paradigms, we are not uh, very close to the global approach. We are we are missing people. We we, we are not building uh, further uh, on the strengths they have. Um, there are many very interesting uh, papers. Um, if Every topic, every six S, uh, uh, has been uh, covered. Um, there are uh, very nice papers on the relationship with the finance, uh, financial part, um, Haritya literacy model. Uh, there are many papers on Shubla. Uh, we see the connection there with uh, social entrepreneurship. This is also one of the fields that management is, is trying to find uh, kind of a pattern, what is social entrepreneurship. Sometimes it becomes a very much a charity kind of organization. But if we talk about social entrepreneurship, it's combining both. You just talked about not-for-profit, doesn't mean that we are a charity at which so. It is financially a healthy business we do, but we bring in the social dimension. So if we talk about these papers on Shubla uh, related to social entrepreneurship, uh, those are very nice examples. And there are many other uh, related to Suhad Harum. There will be a workshop uh, and a book launch uh, by Marco uh, later on. And uh, so we will be able uh, to experience a different kind of uh, conference because it's the first conference. Uh, and uh, we don't know exactly what to expect. But we wanted to also see whether there are different ways of learning. Because you can read a paper and uh, learn from it. Uh, you can uh, watch videos and learn from it. But actually the real uh, knowledge happens in interaction, in dialogues. 
and uh, really experiencing yourself. So I would really encourage everyone uh, to, to ask questions, uh, maybe in formal sessions, but also if, if you are uh, in small groups. I would like to encourage students to ask questions, whatever question comes to you. They are not right or wrong questions, because here all of us are here for learning. And as I said, knowledge will happen if you have a sincere, uh, you know, question, and, and that that will happen. And uh, Saraswati Mata will guide us to, to find a flow, to find the best flow to take this uh, conference further. Um, I would like to show now uh, a short video uh, where uh, just the block uh, will answer five questions, and then after that we will uh, have. I will end my keynote and we will follow up this with a panel discussion. Okay? Hello, everybody. Uh, Puneet and Shada asked me to answer some questions uh, about the learnings from Buurtzorg. So now I'll try to give some answers on several questions. And the first question is. Uh, what are the learnings from Buurtzorg when it comes to a client-centered approach? Um, I think um, the most important thing is that uh, you start thinking from out of the perspective of the client and you organize everything in your organization based on that. Um, that sounds logical, but it's in most organizations it starts the other way around. So don't start with strategy, mission, vision, but start with the pers perspective of the client and then ask the, uh, the, the people who are serving the client in our organization, nurses, uh, how they think that a client-centered way of working could work best. So, and how you can create continuity and how can you attune to the client. So this, um, taking the perspective of the client uh, seriously and organize based on the craftsmanship and the wisdom of the workers, of the professionals, I think the most important learnings. So don't start with the management, don't start with the strategy, but start with the perspective of the client. That's the answer on this question. The next question is about what are the learnings about how Buurtzorg works? or organizes. I think the most important learning is that uh, only doing what is needed, the needing principle, as Sharda wrote in her book, Integrating Simplification. The needing principle is, I think, a very important um, principle of the way Brits are organized. And that means also uh, that you don't do what's not needed. What I see in a lot of organizations, um, bigger organizations, you see a lot of meetings, you see a lot of managers doing meetings uh, without, sometimes without any reason. I think, um, and it connects with the question uh, I answered earlier about the client-focused way of doing things, the needing principle based on what clients need and based on what the professionals are the ones who are serving clients think it's necessary is a very important thing. So try to avoid all kind of waste, all kind of meetings, all kind of management and all kind of systems that doesn't contribute to the service you are delivering. That's my answer on the second question. And then the next question is about what are the learnings uh, if, it com if it comes to the professional workers? Um, how do they work? Um, Within Buurtzorg we have a lot of nurses, we have now 14,000 people working and I think one of the most important things is that all these people have brains and they are thinking the whole day through uh, and with everything they're doing, they're doing mindful things with clients. Um, if you let them, if you create a context and if you let them do what they think they should do, it leads to very positive results. It leads to meaningful things, meaningful relations, and it leads to a better organized organization. Because 
they use their talents in the way they're organizing their daily work. And that's something different than managing things from top down. So I think the most important learning from my perspective is take people serious and ask them what they think is the best way to organize and let them organize based on their own wisdom and insights. That's my answer on this question. And then the next question is about the IT. What are the learnings from the use of IT and the IT support? Um, when we started with Bootsa, we didn't know what the impact should be or could be from the IT support. What we learned is that uh, communication and information um, flows, flows very horizontally and um, it's, it's had big impact on the development of Buurtzorg. So the IT support um, is a very important thing, but what um, I think most important thing what we learned is that if you don't speak the language of the uh, professionals, of the nurses, um, if you don't focus on the, um, uh, the way they are going to use the IT and the user friendliness of the IT, then I think it will become an obstacle. If you just ask them what are the things you need in your daily work to use IT as good as possible, then you build an IT support which is really supportive for uh, the nurses. And that's what I say, the nurses within Bussos, they say we are very happy that our IT support is supporting our primary process. So this is the answer on this question. And then the last question is about, is there a way forward to one Buurtzorg, one world, or one world, one Buurtzorg? Um, I think there is. I think um, if you look at the interest there is in a lot of countries, I think we have uh, 30, 35 countries who are interested or where people are interested in the principles of how to organize, uh, but also how to improve healthcare. Um, I think there is um, um, a possibility to create synergy in what's happening in these different countries. We can learn from each other, we can create a platform um, on how we can exchange ideas, information and knowledge. And um, as we have done in, in Holland and what happens in uh, several other countries, it's not so difficult to start something small uh, based on the principles of Buurtzorg and also on the world view on Buurtzorg. And I think that for the coming years um, it will become more and more necessary to uh, focus on uh, the intrinsic motivation of workers and to focus on a client-centered way of doing things and uh, to avoid all kind of um, energy which is wasted in a lot of organizations. Uh, so. I think if we focus on uh, meaningful things, if we focus on mindful things, uh, if we organize based on sustainable ways and organic ways of uh, doing things, uh, and we connect all these different experiences in different countries with each other, then I think something beautiful will come out of it. And I'm sure that is just the beginning of a movement where it will show the coming 10, 20, 30 years that it becomes more and more normal to organize and to think this way. This was my answer on the last question. I will contribute to developing this one Boots of One World and I hope you enjoy uh, learning from it. Thank you very much.